Yes. There seems to be this new, newer phenomenon called open orthodoxy, open Hillel. Could it be a renaissance of re-beginning of the emergence of conservative Judaism? Or what is it? Uh, please try to elucidate, because from here, it's not happening here in, in so much as what's going on in America, and you're there. Could you please enlighten us a little bit about... Yes, the question is about uh, open orthodoxy. Well, uh, from my perspective, you hit the nail on the head. I wrote an article, I think it's now five, six years ago, called the rise of the neocons. I was the first one to call that movement the neoconservative movement, because essentially they're going down the same road the conservative movement did uh, a little over a hundred years ago, nibbling away at the edges of halacha, but even more, uh, heart, even more uh, uh, deleteriously, w what they're doing is they are willfully infiltrating Western values and making Torah decisions based on them. And that is never a healthy combination for Jews, because you uh, ultimately just wind up mimicking what you, the neighbors are doing. And the barometer of what the Torah should say becomes what our neighbors can expect or look for. So yeah, sadly they're making the same mistake, except for in, in almost every area whether it's uh, with the women's issues, with Tanakh, uh, with rabbinic authority, uh, just one of them, uh, another one of them, and the only issue that they're really stuck on is Mechitza, because in the 1950s, when the Mechitza Wars took place in America, Mechitza wound up being known as what they call an advertising, the Orthodox brand. You have a Mechitza, you're orthodox. You don't, you're not. So that's when, it was after that, the OU started uh, distancing itself from uh, the OU shuls that did not have mechitzot. It's hard for us to imagine these days. In 1960, there were about two, 250 members of the Orthodox Union, shul members that didn't have mechitzot. And one by one, they put in mechitzot or moved to the conservative movement. The last one, made its decision a year ago, December, I think, December 2015, mm -hmm. and they voted not to put a mechitza, and they left the OU. Uh, so now every OU shul has a mechitza, but because it's the, it's the Orthodox brand, a mechitza, as much as it, it has to bother their egalitarian instincts, nonetheless, they, can't, they, they couldn't call themselves even open Orthodox if they took away the mechitza. So, again, it's nibbled around the edges, take away for some things, not other things, but that remains the holding point. But increasingly, I mean, the OU statement uh, from a few weeks ago, in which they joined with all the mainstream Orthodox organizations in America, where the OU, the RCA, Young Israel, uh, Torah, Rabbis, um, Aguda, uh, wall to wall, in the mainstream, and the, and the Jews I'm in those organizations represent easily 98% of America, American Orthodox Jewry, they said, you can't have women clergy. That'll be a defining line as well, and they have to deal with that uh, issue.